What's up guys? It's almost one in the morning. I just finished fixing C Roy, which was blown up and the old engine it's right over here. And then Mr. Johan and I tackled this thing all day and got it back together and now it actually runs. So we're doing the final touches. But we have a special guest at the shop today, right over here, that the man that works with triangles. The man, the legend, Mr. Angel Vargas. That's the man to take to when you want to get these guys right here built. So, you were telling me something really cool about my engine. And that is that I have a good S5. So the S5s, they come different models like on this rear plate wise. So this dowel area is the big dowel area. This is the weakest point of the rotary engine. Okay. So this one is already the big dowel area and it has the reinforcement right there. So that way where you have your finger on? Yep, that's the, the reinforcement, that, the angle right there. Yeah. So that keeps the keeps it from cracking. So pretty much these motors, when they start making power and torque, they start twisting. Yeah. And the dowel pins has got two up here and two down here. And that's what keeps it all together. Okay. So when it starts twisting, it cracks this plate. Oh, so that's why this one is more reinforced yes. in this area. So yeah, does so it have a thicker dowel pin than the regular the one, or is it the same? same? Yeah, the dowel pin is exactly the same. It's only okay. the plate that they changed. So they try to fix their the problems, you know, from when they first started. Yeah. You know, they noticed that they had crack plates, all that stuff. So they're like, you know, they made a bigger cast, reinforced. But you know, that's still for the power of one four. Uh huh. This helps a lot. Yeah. But we're still gonna do stuff to it to make it even stronger, you know. So, so the main question is how much power do you think we can get out of this car out of this engine? As it sits without pinning it, we can get five hundred horsepower easily. Okay. And so then with pinning? With the pinning we can get uh, between 500 to 700, depending on the fuel boost or whatever we want to do. So if I were to run E85 on it, it should yeah, be good? Yeah, E85, you get close to 600 easily. Okay, um, so that means, what would you think? If I were to run it at, let's say, 500 or 550 range, it would be good to probably overbuild it for real reliability, yep. right? Yep, so we always overbuild all our engines. Like, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if it's like 300 horsepower, 1,000 horsepower, whatever. Uh, you know, I want to do everything to it and, you know, overbuild it. Yeah. You know, I don't want to build it for 400 horsepower and then, you know, you boost spike or <laughs> decide to Oh, yeah, I know about boost spiking yeah. right here. <laughs> so We've seen that. At least the only good point is that no matter how much boost we run on this rotor and we're never going to throw a rod out of it, right? Yep. Right, Mr. LZ? What if I throw a rod out, out of my rod. rotary? I got a rod for you. <laughs> 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 so, before we take it apart, I already heard from the videos that it was bad. So that's why oh, yeah? I like, said something to you. So, with a rotary engine, you want to listen to six pops in a row, six compression strokes. Okay. So you spin it. That's one. That one's a little weaker. That's two. Three. Four. And then that's the one that you have bad. So, so we have and pop. we have five out of six faces that are good in compression. So one, two, three, four. That one you heard that one that kept spinning. Uh huh. And then that one again. So you have two faces that are missing. Oh, so it's four then. So you got four good compressions and two that are missing. So it's four over here. <laughs> no. <laughs> I heard those so, are expensive, Alberto. You got the good engine. So if oh, two man. Rotor, I'm more right now. Technically, <laughs> it's like a six cylinder. So he's got a. So I got a four banger got, on got this. Four banger, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I thought I had a, a little. So, uh, not a straight six, but a round six. Yeah. I always knew it sounded <laughs> weird. So we're going to, you know, once we take it apart, we'll find out what's going on. Like, yeah. it could be apex seal, side seal. You know, you see an apex seal, you, you'll notice it. Um, oh, uh, so other. one thing that I did, I I was curious. I put all the apexes and I push it, and they're, you can actually press and they spring back. Okay, so, so they're all there. It's right probably now. a side seal issue kind of thing. It could there. be a side seal issue, carbon locked or a chipped apex seal. 
Yeah. But from spinning it right now, it, it looks like something's wrong on one rotor and something's wrong on the other rotor. So it could be side seals. Probably was like sitting for a while and it just got yeah. that one spot on each like stock that could have been a thing. Yep. I also was wondering, there's a lot of like gunk on these holes. What are these holes for? EGR ports. Okay, so that doesn't mean this one's completely so clogged or something like that. the turbo manifold only uses one port. Uh-huh. So given that, you know, it uses this one over here and this one over here. And yeah. Mazda, you know, only made one mold for one housing. So, you okay. know, this one's not used on this housing, but this one's used here. But then this one's not used. So Yeah, so they just gunk know, up. It's just it uses one of them on each side. So it just gunks up. It nice. has nowhere to go, you know. Yeah. It's hitting a wall right there in the manifold. But yeah, it's just EGR stuff. You know, when you put the new turbo manifold for the single turbo, uh -huh. all that stuff gets blocked off. Uh, same thing here, the EGR port, we're not using those. EGR so port. So that's EGR all. over there as yeah, well. So that means these top ports are, are coming out of here, they, they end up here? Yeah, they end up. Uh, so technically, from the top, these ports are down here. So it just uh -huh. goes around it. Like okay. So we're just blocking that off completely. So from here, it goes to the side of the housing. Yeah. And then from the side of the housing, it comes up through oh. here. And then it goes to the intake, to the EGR valve on Almost the Almost like builds a lot of extra heat inside the housing there. So on the intake, right here, the exhaust gases will go up through here. Uh-huh. And then they'll come out through here to the EGR port. Oh. So it's got a big assembly right here it will almost be kind of cool if you could get like a gasket that blocks it over there so you don't heat the whole intake yeah. up so people will just block it off right here uh-huh or they'll weld this shut yeah right here clean it off good weld it shut and then true it and just yeah. completely get rid of it overall i think that kind of sounds like a better option than yeah. than doing it over there because you just heat the whole thing will just be full of exhaust gases mm -hmm. so this one right here is a coolant port yeah. Right here, so as you saw, coolant comes through uh -huh. here. One of them's blocked off on the intake because it doesn't do anything. This is the one that feeds coolant to the turbo right here. Yeah. Uh, to this one. So yeah, this I saw is so I have to run a line from there. Probably make a nice AN fitting, like a little flange. And probably somebody makes a kit or well, something. What people do, what what I would do is I want to block this off. Yeah. Because you don't want hot antifreeze on one of the you know heating up these two runners yeah so the problem that these have you know they blow up on the rear a lot okay and you know part of the reason is like the you know the boost cut cuts fuel in the rear and another reason is that coolant passes right in between these two ports right here yeah so the air temperatures are way hotter in the rear rotor than the front oh i didn't know that so you know you want to block off this coolant passage okay and if you have a turbo that's water fed, you want to take it out from the water pump itself. So put yeah. some bungs on the water pump and, you know, don't, we, we don't want to use the intake. As okay, a so tool. like, am I like getting like a gasket or something that has those blocked off? Do I have to like so, manually block uh, it off? I have to check and see what size. I'm pretty sure it's 21 millimeter. You can just get freeze plugs. Uh-huh. Put oh. them in and that's it. So okay. It fit perfectly. You just clean up all this gunk. Yeah. Go to the parts store, get some freeze plugs and that's it. Okay, so that definitely sounds like the way to go. I don't know, but I'm guessing that Angel's gonna be doing a nice cool time lapse for you guys on his channel, taking apart my engine over here while I finish the Z with Johan on this side. Well, Mr. Zero is done. We just finished bleeding the brakes. And meanwhile, Angel just called me that the 13B is ready to be taken apart. He's already set up this nice table over here. I see this is the oil pump for sure. Oil pump, uh, counterweight, that's the oil pump sprocket right there. Crank sensor, and these are the tension bolts themselves. So there's really not So they a have lot like this little ribs, what are these little ribs for? Uh, this is, they did this on uh, the later models right here. Uh, the bolts are thicker. Okay, so, so it's like better yeah, bolts. Yeah, it's better bolts and all that stuff. And then we're getting rid of this, right? The oil metering pumps. Yeah, so we're not using that. This and is it's the pickup tube so and dirty. that pump cover. So it's really not a lot to it, you know. No timing chains, none of that stuff. And then stuff, also, I know there's a spacer here. Yep. And then the, the, truss, the truss bearing. Yep. And that's it. Man, this thing and is thick. 
we're gonna get rid of that because the, at least the flywheel is the counterweight yeah so we're gonna get the motor balanced with an aftermarket uh, automatic counterweight so it's not out aftermarket just an auto counterweight. okay that way we can put whatever yeah, this thing flywheel is huge or, heavy wow yeah. that oil pan that was like just a nothing little bit of sludge you know, oh yeah crazy <laughs> a little bit of sludge is this like a heater or something what yeah, is oil level Oh, so there's okay. a sensor in there, so that just oh, keeps it from a little sloshing housing. and... Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I get it. So, now the... This is a moment everybody's yeah. been waiting for. We're gonna see, we know it's hurt, we just gotta see what is hurt, so... Just start with this plate right here. Ooh. Pull it straight up, there's gonna be some seal stuck on it. Oh. Like always. Corner seal there. Yep. So this Isn't that like a little inside part of it too? Yeah. Pretty that actually looks pretty here. good. I thought it was gonna be like all scratched up. And then this side seal goes here. So stock port, so you know it's never been touched. Um, I don't feel anything. I see like normal wear lines. Yeah, I seen pictures like of like catches. things that are terrible. This actually looks very so, good. The bearings they're not that bad either we're still replacing them yeah but they don't look they're not showing copper or anything like that so we'll just put this right here it's oh, my first time the, seeing rotors in person like outside the, of the engine the part i was talking about this is what cracks but you see the size of this one yeah it's, it's really the same up. it's the almost the same size as an fd plate okay fd plates take up to like 30 pounds of boost without pinning nice just because they have this and reinforced so this is a really really yeah. really good plate. i also like here that since it had coolant it didn't rust over so i seen that it's always like this stuff have really deep pockets that yeah. need to be machined now and this looks very good yeah and then this plate these walls break a lot yeah but this plate has thick walls so that's another plus on this engine nice so everything seems to be working on our favor with it <laughs> That's really cool. This is the most exciting thing that can happen to me right now. Even though I'm like super sleepy, I probably have like the world's biggest eye bags right now, like hardcore because I've been working all day. But I got that thing ready for tomorrow, and then we're also taking care of my 13B, which is gonna be in good hands now. No, let's continue with the teardown and see what we find. Guys, the video ended up being super, super long, so I'm gonna split the content of the 13B teardown in two separate videos. So this is part one of two. Then tomorrow I will be uploading the rest of the teardown and a couple surprises that we got with C Roy. And make sure to subscribe to Angel's YouTube page, which is Angel Motorsports, and you can check out some of the content over there as well. He is supposed to have a couple timelines and it's probably gonna have some videos of really informative rotary content so check his page out and i'll see you guys tomorrow